so the question is whether randomness, random, do things just move, is a good answer to the question, why do things change? Well, again, how is this, uh, <laughs> how is this a coherent answer, right? So uh, we ask, why do things exist? Why do the trees exist? Why, uh, why do the atoms come together? And say it's random. You know, what that amounts to is to say, what brought these trees into existence? And the answer is nothing. <laughs> Parmenides is in the background saying, oh, come on. You're telling me nothing brings things together now? <laughs> nothing has no causal force, right? It doesn't exist. It can't do anything. Even the way I'm speaking about it in English is incoherent. To say nothing causes this to exist is itself incoherent. So, uh, and by the way, this flies in the face of contemporary physics and biology. We will talk about at least four fundamental forces of nature that bring these objects together. Strong and weak nuclear, gravity, and electromagnetic. We've got lots of forces. <laughs> you know, if you're sufficiently ingrained into some biology, maybe you speak about evolutionary forces. Uh, the force of history. Right? <laughs> Sometimes we, we're a little too flippant with the use of the term force. <laughs> but um, to simply say nothing does it. That is, that's an incoherent answer. Right? So if you're taking serious the question, what causes this to exist? What caused that tree to exist? You would say nothing caused it to exist. That's an incoherent answer. Maybe they're maybe doing something else. Maybe they're saying this, all right? So, all right, so suppose I have a large dice, right? And I roll it down the path here and it comes up two. And I say, why did it come up two? What would your answer be? Well, more than likely say, well, it's random, right? It could have come up two or three or four or five, or six, right? The chance of it coming up two is one out of six, just like the chance of it coming up six is one out of six. Right? So there's no real explanation of why it comes up two as opposed to three or four or five or one or whatever. Right? Maybe they're doing something like that. You know, so, so when I say, why does it come up two? And you say, it's random. What you're saying is that's a bad question. There is no why. There is no why why it comes up to. We see people pulling this, you know, like, when did you, when did you stop stealing lunches from the fridge? <laughs> it's like, wait, what? <laughs> you know, that question, uh, it, you know, it's, it's a bad question, right? That question has a false assumption. And the assumption is there was some point in time in which you stole a lunch. Right? Uh, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully that's a bad question. Right? If you're stealing lunches from fridges, you're a bad person. Stop doing it. Um, and you know, similarly, if I say, why did it come up to? You say, well, there is no why. That's a bad question. I mean, maybe Lysippus and Democritus could do something like this. Maybe they're trying to, right? Why did the tree start to, there is no why. That's a bad question. But it sure seems like it's a good question, right? I mean, we, we, if we don't ask that question, if we don't ask why did the tree come to exist, we've abandoned all biology. If we don't ask why the sun rises and sets, I mean, they're going to say nothing. If we don't ask why the sun rises, well, no, we have a why. And it falls gravita gravitational, the gravitational forces, the sun and the, uh, and, the, uh, uh, and the earth and the spin of the earth on its axis, right? There's a really coherent account of why the sun rises and sets. We don't just say, well, there is no why. If we start doing that, we start, start you know, saying there is no why for all of this, right? we've killed any kind of scientific investigation at all. Because there is no why. So their answer, right, that all this is random, it's not a good answer.